What is up, Collider TV Talk fans? As you guys can tell, I'm not Sinead DeFreeze. I, I would try and do my Sinead DeFreeze impression, but she's actually not going to show up today at all. She's in South Africa. We miss you, Sinead. I hope you're having fun there at the Laura, Laura Croft Tomb Raider, although I called her Laura Tomb Raider this morning. <laughs> Laura. Laura. Yes. Laura. 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 Laura Croft Tomb Raider. Uh, I'm Josh McCuga. I'm here every week on Collider TV Talk. Thank you guys so much for being with us here. We're going to talk about the leftovers. We're going to talk about Fargo Season 3. We're going to talk about Silicon Valley. Unfortunately, we're going to talk about Girl Boss. Tons of stuff to get to, those Game of Thrones images. We have a very special guest here today. Before we introduce him, let's start with the usuals. David Griffin's here. What's up, Dave? What's up? Happy to be here. Happy to talk about a lot of television this week. There was so much to watch this week, so many premieres. Some shows leaving. Yeah. It was uh, it was exciting. Now the beard is coming in a little bit. Is are we going back so, towards beard? Eric, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but I had a beard for a while. A yeah. very thick beard. I've seen imagery. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Oh, yeah. great. Oh, that's great. Um, and people when I cut it off, people were just like, "What happened?" People right. were disliking videos because mm -hmm. the beard was gone. So yes. it's it's coming back. They are fervent about your beard yeah. as we are about Wu Tang Clan tattoos. <laughs> Uh, another favorite, Emma Fife is here. Yay, What's up, Emma? Hi, glad to be here. Uh, I love that you led in with. Unfortunately, we're going to talk about Girl Boss. <laughs> yes. Just leave it. You know, right off the bat, we're just going to put it out there. Put I'm it out there, guys. Sure YouTube uh, is going to love it. Yes. <laughs> and a first-time guest from IGN, Eric Goldman. Thank What's you. Up, Eric? <laughs> ah, ah, thank you, thank you, guys. Everybody's clapping, dude. Thank you so much for being on the show. No, very happy to be here, and I like that he also previewed the Wu Tang Clan and a tattoo because <laughs> that's something I'm really happy to talk about later on. Yeah, yes. we uh, we are a big fan of that show before we get into it what's uh like your tv palette like what are some of your favorites what are things that you always reference that are inspirations in the tv world uh so i mean a lot of go-to's and these are not shocking i think but uh you know buffy uh, yeah. the wire battle star twin okay. peaks which i'm so excited yeah. about the return yeah. those are kind of my all-star favorites and then currently love the leftovers uh the americans i yes. think is amazing uh, i still haven't gotten over losing hannibal a couple years ago oh, I know. Recent faves. Yeah, so there's yeah. a lot of good stuff out there right now absolutely though. all right eric thanks for being here man yeah. uh let's get into it first story up top those uh game of thrones images we got last week now some of them are very boring i.e the Arya storyline, which I think has been boring since like the end of season four. But <laughs> I, listen, I'm not a big Arya storyline fan. I love Arya Stark. Don't get me right, wrong. I think right. the character is incredible. But again, they just gave us a simple picture of her staring in right. where, you know, we get a pretty badass picture of, you know, Daenerys in her new gear with Tyrion with the hand of the king, yeah. you know, sitting right there. What do you guys think of the images, Dave? I like them. Uh, I mean, it just gets me excited. It's just a big tease because we haven't really yet seen a full on trailer. You know, yeah. Some, yeah. some teasers, you know, it's look cool. But my favorite there is probably Sansa. She has, looks like she's almost like joined the Night's Watch. You mm -hmm. know, she looks like she's dressed in a female version of what Jon Snow uh, would wear there. So I'm excited to see what her story is going to be, of course. I mean, probably everybody's favorite, of course, is probably uh, Tormund and Brienne, you yeah. know. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh, yeah. I mean, that's just, I mean, that, we, we want to see that eyes. romance happen. Yeah. I mean, as much as we love Brienne and Jamie, we want to see Tormund and Jamie, or that, Brienne too. It's that yeah. friend zone guy that's like, dude, you're just not going to He's like, I don't care. I don't, he's, <laughs> no. he's, uh, you could say Tormund's very persistent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, and that's and that's one of those storylines that like doesn't exist in the books that I actually really like. Oh yeah. That's on the show. So obviously I'm all about the Tormund and Brienne. Uh, and then I I'm just so curious to see where they go with Cersei and Danny and everybody yeah. this season. Uh, I'm just I'm ready for an actual trailer. Yes. No. Not just walking, right? Not ice melting, right. which I sat through the whole ice uh. melting. Thing. <laughs> Eric, did you sit through the ice melting? I did. I mean, we were at the office and we're like, "What's happening? Yeah. What, what does our life become?" So we were watching ice melt. Yeah. Ken Napsok and I were legitimately uh, on Instagram Live, and then we just got bored and started talking about each other's lives as those blow torches were going. Can't believe I spent an hour of my life looking at that. What? Are, what? Are, you're a big Game of Thrones yeah. fan, obviously. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorite storylines going? You know, going look, forward? they are being careful. You know, we know we're in the era now, especially now that they've passed the books. They are being so careful careful with not showing yeah. us too much. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so it's hard to find like things there, but I will say Jamie, you know, standing by Cersei just because there's been so much back and forth about how much he literally stands by her or might turn against her. But mm -hmm. right there, he seems to be kind of right back by her side. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Lady Mormont, come on. Yeah. Cause yeah. she was the most awesome character and I wanted to win everything at the, the end. Best. So. Now is she, is Lady Mormont in the books? Is she as badass as she is in the show because I, last year in one sentence she became my favorite character on game I of Thrones. feel like i hope i'm remembering this correctly that she might be in the books but she's not like she doesn't have a, a, that long of a i don't think speaking yeah. Yeah. Yeah, voice, yeah she exists but she hasn't really done yeah too too much there are mm -hmm. other mormon family members that don't appear in the show like daisy mormon who yeah. are amazing yeah. but she exists 
But again, like, and again, it, it's been a while since I've read the books now, since it's been a while since we've had a new one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she, so. Uh, it, if I ever have a daughter, I just want her to be that cool. Yeah, yeah. Young and, and that's what I think makes her pop on the show, right? Because you could read in the book, like, and there's a kid sitting on the throne, but it's just a one moment. On the show, they cast this great little actress yeah. Yeah. and she just kind of owns the scenes she's in. And so yeah. now she's the breakout character of Game of Thrones. So yeah. We're going to talk about the Hound. Yeah. We haven't, you know, we haven't seen Out him in a little snow. bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. yeah I'm glad he's back. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the, because the Hound, for the most part, has kind of not had the greatest storyline last mm -hmm. season. He really wasn't in a lot of the show. So the fact that we're getting, I mean. He, he also was like sort of dead for yes. a good portion <laughs> yes. of the show. Right. Right. So. Exactly. Um, I, I'm, I'm really, and because and that really goes back into the Arya storyline. Hopefully they're, you know, because. That's true. Yeah. Because she had her like buddy cop adventure with right. the Hound yeah. for a right. while. Right. Which yeah. Check in. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, let's go on to X Files. Uh, we got mm. they're, what they're saying ten more episodes at yeah. Fox. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I was never a giant fan of the original series, mostly because I get too scared when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I thought I watched the movies because I figured why not do it justice, sure. whatever. I thought the movies were average at best, and I think a lot of the, the general viewing public, even the super fans, were. And to get ten more episodes at Fox feels like another twenty four grab. Even 24 mm -hmm. Legacy, listen, I watched the first three episodes. I knew what was going to happen. I knew it was going to go. It was classic 24. So did that really get me excited to say, oh, we're going to get 10 more episodes of X-Files? Maybe they can research more right. storylines. We were talking about Twin Peaks before the camera started yeah. rolling. Uh, obviously, people are super excited about Twin Peaks. That was 20 plus years ago. And, you know, we're getting this whole 18-hour mini movie when it comes to, to Twin Peaks. Right. I don't know what I think about X-Files. I'm going to give it to the expert, David Griffin, who is a huge expert. <laughs> So I grew up with my dad watching it, you know, uh, when I was younger. And what got me, so you talk about classic mm -hmm. uh, Twin Peaks. This, look, I mean, look at this photo of Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. It doesn't feel like classic X-Files. Now, maybe that's unfair because it's been several years since we uh, saw them on screen together. But my issue is just the personalities are different. Like, Duchovny has become his character from Californication. Like, he looks super cool there. I mean, he's hip. He's got his shades on. He's not that kind of you know, awkward, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, ultra smart FBI agent. And even Julian Anderson has become this, you know, from like the fall series, you know, the, the, the BBC series, mm -hmm. the fall or, or Netflix series, like she's become different. She's like ultra confident and her character is like very domineering. It's just, it's Plus changed. It's seven years of Hank it's Moody. Yeah. In yeah. So I think it's just for me, when I look at that, it doesn't feel like X-Files. These actors who are great actors yeah. have become different people and I just don't like them in this iteration of X-Files. Well, because I think, and, and again, I, I was also not a huge X-Files fan. I'm just young <clears throat> enough that I was a little young to watch X-Files. Yeah. I did watch it sometimes with my mom mm -hmm. who really liked it, but I feel like, David, what you're saying is that, you know, these two characters, they're no longer the same characters that they were on the original series. And it doesn't feel like a natural mm -hmm. evolution that would have happened to Mulder and Scully. And now because you've lost that dynamic, you're losing what was so great about X-Files. I, uh, I was a huge X-Files fan, uh, but yeah, the, the revival a couple years ago, this is the follow-up to the six episode one. It was very disappointing. And you know, X-Files also is a show that you know ran way too long in its initial mm -hmm. run. And by the end, it really lost the thread of its mythology. And, it's, and when you look back on X-Files, the best episodes were the standalones, you know, the mm -hmm. Monster of the Week stuff. So I don't know, Chris Carter, it's like all the credit in the world for creating X-Files and what he made, but I don't think he's like the best guy for like the mythology idea stuff. And I don't know, it's hard to just get excited after those six episodes. And I love these two actors nope. and mm -hmm. I love the franchise. But it's very much like, okay, it's like when we hear they might do a rest development again. It's yeah. like, unfortunately, they, yeah. the, the revival season we got wasn't great. So now you're like, all right, okay. This, when we talk about this a lot is, is missing windows, right? Mm -hmm. When you do a comedy sequel to a movie 22 years later, you've missed your window. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Dumb and Dumber 2, Zoolander 2. I mean, you, you missed windows. And I think, like we're talking about, is, is X-Files has sort of missed its window. It's, it's out of the, the popular conversation. It's kind of so cultish now that even to get new viewers are like it's another one of these yeah. it's it's almost like we don't really care show us more stuff and because there's so much available for us to watch it's like oh we're just going to watch this for nostalgia purposes and give it a pass or is it going to be good i mean it came back to really high numbers so i th i think it showed that there is still excitement for it but what they gave people wasn't enough to sustain that excitement mm -hmm. and that's yeah. that's going to be their big problem because they could do it once they could be like we're back and get people to watch but now the people aren't as excited anymore mm -hmm. i think that's going to be more of an uphill battle i right? think it depends how you do it like seinfeld did a great job when it was on um curb enthusiasm 
Yeah. Remember that little uh, two episode arc yeah. there where like they brought back the show, it worked there or rebooted. Yeah. Put some new characters in there. Start the X Files, do a new generation, kind of like 24 Legacy. Yeah. We got yeah. a different character That's, instead of, which is a good way to do I, it. Uh, I'll <coughs> plug an interview I just did with Damon oh. Lindelof nice. because he brought up, because uh, he was talking about the ideas of reboots and coming back. And he said he loves X Files, but he'd kind of be curious what is someone who's not Chris Carter's idea of X Files and different actors, kind of yeah. the same yeah. idea. Like there's, you could just have it take place in the same world, but maybe right. go into a different direction. And that's yeah. what somebody's always asked me, like if they brought Sopranos back to television, what would you want to see? And I'm like, I, first of all, I would never want that. But I mean, I'm so, such a giant Sopranos fan that if you gave me some Sopranos, I would obviously watch it. And I would want that season finale to have been Tony getting killed and seeing where the Soprano clan is. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think they should have done without the X-Files, like you're talking about now, because we I, having a new X-Files yeah. team, that would be cool. That yeah. would be something I would watch mm -hmm. for sure. Definitely. All right, let's go into the superhero rundown. Uh, a lot of you guys were asking me on Twitter and stuff uh, this past week about the Wheel of Time show. We will talk about that at the beginning of Highs and Lows. So if you're, you're wondering what we're going to talk about and when we're going to talk about that, we will at the beginning of Highs and Lows. But let's talk about superhero rundown. Now, cool enough, I talked to Andrea Roth about Cloak and Dagger, and she plays mo the mom of mm -hmm. Dagger, yeah. right? The, she's the dagger, and he's the cloak. Yes. yes. Let's make lots of money. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, first of all, I thought this trailer was, I didn't think, I was like, freeform, it's going to be all bubbles and, yeah. you know, sparkles. And this trailer was like a Netflix That's Marvel show. literally mm -hmm. exactly what I was thinking. I was like, this fits right into the Netflix Marvel yes. universe, yeah. which was so surprising to me because, you know, freeform, it's ABC Family. It's Pretty Little like, Liars. It's, it's, yeah. It's uh, Switched at Birth. The Fosters. Fosters. It's the yeah. Fosters. But I mean, yeah. to me, this felt like just a Marvel Netflix series with younger characters. Mm hmm and yeah. I think that's what they want. I mean, because a, a lot of, you know, I don't know about you guys, but like I got a lot on Twitter, like, why isn't this just a Netflix too? I'm like, well, first of all, because Freeform is owned by Disney and they want, if they'd yeah. love to have things under their own wind, but also it's like, they want, a broad audience and the Netflix shows are also like you know super heavy on the cursing and the sex yeah. and the violence yeah. and I don't think this will be that but it does match the tone so I think that's a smart idea you know yeah. make it a little more accessible but still make it feel like those shows. I totally agree and I think that um, one of the sort of benefits almost in a way of doing this show on Freeform is the fact that you are going to try to keep that Netflix tone, that grittiness, while still being able to appeal to a younger audience. So you almost have to get a little bit more creative in your storytelling because yeah. you can't just go for the shock factor of the sex and the violence. Mm -hmm. And, but it also looks kind of sexy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. right? Yeah. It, I mean, it does. And it, <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it is the network of Pretty Little Liars. Yes. Right. They, right. You know, right. They, and they've got their show, sex appeal yeah. stuff going on. Unfortunately, yeah. Sinead is not here to do her first 30 seconds of Pretty oh, Little Liars man. of the year because it just premiered. Uh, but that show is sexy. Right. I don't know, yeah. That show is like yeah. really in your face with it. What do you think of the trailer, D? -Dale? It looks good. I just wish you could have seen more of what Cloak does. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can't, like, there's one point he's on top of a roof and he's screaming. He's got this, like, cloak on, but you can't yeah. tell. You don't know what his power is with her. It sure. almost looks Spanish there. A little w. bit, yeah. Little I'm 90% yeah. sure that they've only shot the pilot, so all of that was just from the pilot. So I think uh, it's probably because that you know the reason yeah. they debuted that trailer so early is because it was the upfront for Freeform, which is when they kind of tout to the advertisers their next year of programming. Sure. So I don't think they had much else to show, and I have a feeling it's going to be a slow burn. We know how these superhero shows work. It'll yeah. take a few episodes for him to fully cloak out. And yeah. you were an Agents of Shield fan, so mm -hmm. uh, you know as far as Marvel and tone, this. Cloak and Dagger looks way more like Netflix than it does. Agents it does, of Shield. and Shield is a show that took a long time to find what it was going to be. For and sure. a, that first season was kind of all over the place. So yeah. I think now, especially, they're kind of feeling like the you know success of those Netflix shows. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure yeah. when they were, I bet, I'm sure that came up in the meetings when they're talking mm -hmm. about this. It's like, well, what's the tone? Do we kind of try to match Shield? They're like, what if we did the Netflix thing, but yeah, with younger yeah. characters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, uh, let's talk about this Krypton trailer. Again, another. I, I didn't know what I, we were going to get out of this show, to be honest with you. And this trailer, I, listen, you know I'm watching The Expanse now, and I'm getting through that. That's my first sci-fi show I've ever watched. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. Um, I never watch watched Battlestar? Watch 12 Monkeys. Wow. Really yeah, a lot of people have been telling me that on Twitter, too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the first real sci-fi show that I will definitely jump into, because I think we should talk about it. Yeah. Obviously, I love The Expanse. The fact that you turned me on The Expanse, that show is badass. This Krypton trailer... I don't know what to expect. Um, this is really, really cool. I agree. I also went into this sort of like, okay, do we really need a Krypton show? But then having Superman's seen- Superman's grandfather. Yeah. yeah. But then like having seen the trailer and also the fact that it is on sci-fi, I was like, 
I think this is a really good fit for sci-fi. Right, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Think that? Also, too, I just I love the look of it because it yeah. captures Zack Snyder. One thing I loved about Man of Steel, I actually enjoyed Man of Steel. I like Zack Snyder's and We're David. We're on the same page with really? this. Really? I yeah, love because, Man of Steel. I think it's a good movie. Well, I think my fa favorite part of Man of Steel is the stuff on Krypton. Yeah, the yes. yes. opening yeah. of that movie shows all that Kryptonian. Like the, It looked like a... It's weird because you think it would be like lush and beautiful and green, but I don't know if that was because the planet was dying or just looked was very rocky and arid looking. But you had all this cool technology and flying, you know, animals going around there. It looked really cool. So I wanted to explore more of that and see what exactly was going on before it was destroyed. Yeah. I mean, but it does look like the Man of Steel and not like the CW show's no, version of, of Krypton, which yeah. is different. I can't yeah. say I loved Man of Steel. I, I I have not liked any I of the DCU say, movies. I didn't love Man of Steel. <laughs> I really loved the beginning of But it's the one, it's the one that I, yeah. I have parts of it I really yeah. like and mm -hmm. I agree on the stuff in Krypton. And I am curious how much, you know, none of the DC TV shows are set in the movie universe. Right. This is the first one that looks like it might be, you know, mm -hmm. or at least mm -hmm. loosely enough that they can kind of play because there's a lot of the imagery mm -hmm. matches what, like you've said, what we've yeah. seen in those movies. Also, too, you can tell that it was leaked because the DC logo has changed. Yeah. It's got the DC with the circle around it. It had the old DC where the, I think the D is like peeled and you see a little bit of the comic oh, strip. Oh, yes. That trailer wasn't supposed to come out. No, I, I, I would... I would predict that trailer will make its official debut in about three weeks at the NBC Universal upfront. Yeah. Uh, okay. Because officially, the show isn't picked up yet. Like that's the thing oh, is, really? it's, yeah. they oh. fil they filmed the pilot, but they hadn't said we've ordered it to series. I'm guessing they're about to are yeah. about to make that announcement, and this trailer is you know ready to go, or maybe a slightly different mm. edit of this trailer. Special right. effects, I thought. Looked yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. From a leaked yeah. trailer too. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there is there do we have a source material? Do we have an IP on this storyline? Or is this just scripted well, sci-fi? We just know that, I mean, it is about his grandfather. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's extrapolating. I mean, I think, I'm sure that you could find a few random issues that are sure. like about his grandfather, but I don't think there's like a big deep dive miniseries yeah. or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that this is largely going to be, you know, an original sci-fi series. Yeah. And, and again, it's like, Sci-fi makes good shows about like yeah. civilizations in space. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have, what have you thought about? Because I've never really asked you. What have yeah. you thought about Superman on Supergirl? I've enjoyed Superman on Supergirl mm -hmm. actually quite a lot. Um, yeah. I think that they've done a nice job of utilizing him just enough that you're like, cool, Superman exists, but it's still definitely you know Kara's sure. show. But I I also like seeing them work together and and sort of the cousins dynamic that they've got yeah. going on. And he doesn't hate life. Yeah, it's just so yeah. good to see yeah. a Superman who seemed to be enjoying life yeah. and enjoying being Superman. Can I ask Eric, while well, yeah. we have him here, um, we're gonna get our fifth CW show, fifth superhero CW oh, show yeah. next year with Black Lightning. Do you think we have a chance of getting a standalone Superman series? I, it feels or like series, right maybe. now it feels like they're just they keep Superman and Batman at that weird periphery, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? They have Gotham, but mm -hmm. he's not an adult Batman. And then they have Supergirl and he might show up and they have Krypton. So it seems like this weird thing where they're avoiding putting those characters as like the marquee. So it's, you know, people have asked that, when, especially once they introduce Superman and Supergirl, oh, spinoff. And it feels like for now they're saying no, but I feel like the more shows we get on CW, the more you gotta think, they have to talk well, about we it. We were kind of yeah. talking last week about uh, getting Superman as like an eight episode anthology right. in between a season mm -hmm. or like a summer. And I think that's great. I think because yeah. there is the danger of oversaturation on CW specifically, right? Like or if Black Lightning goes to series, are they going to have one show every night? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I feel like. <laughs> and one night with two shows? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I feel like shorter uh, shorter runs is, you know, because right now they're mostly doing 22 of those shows. Which I think Legends of Tomorrow to 16. Yeah. Yeah. I think going to like 13 episodes, maybe even shorter, like you were saying, yeah. and have them bridge the gap, I think that'd be a great mm -hmm. idea. Yeah, we had uh, Mark Guggenheim in here, and we, we, David and I asked him, like, do you like 22 or 13? He was like, 13. Like, he jumped, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He jumped right on <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, absolutely, I mean, because it's, everyone knows, I mean, a lot of people are pretty candid about the fact that you, they know that they're gonna have that mid-season sort of sag when you yeah. do 22, because yeah. it's, yeah, it's a lot it's of freaking TV. Look at the yeah. girl with the bees episode, yeah. I always so. finish. <laughs> Speaking of bees, uh, that was on Arrow. We got an Arrow, uh, <laughs> We got an Arrow like end of season trailer, uh, and most of what everybody's been talking about is Elicity. Is, is definitely not Elicity. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it is the fact that we're gonna get <laughs> Deathstroke at the end. There, we're gonna get Deathstroke. It looks like we're having Laurel versus you know Black Siren. You get the Earth Two Black. Yeah. Well, we got what Black Siren, that Black Canary yeah. is what she is on mm -hmm. Earth Two. Uh, you get. It, I mean, listen. I personally think, and and John Camp and I were talking about. It, I've been trying to get him back because I think season five has been the season two that like we remembered. It's not mm -hmm. the all the spacey kind of mystical stuff. And this whole kind of storyline going towards the end, him recruiting all his badass buddies because he can't beat Prometheus on his own has been pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I think it, this, it hasn't been quite back to season two, but it's been a okay. strong season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this trailer, 
It was like a movie trailer. It really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it, I mean, it had to be. It wasn't just like next week on Arrow. It was like, this is going to be the crescendo we have wanted. Yep. People are getting punched in the face Yeah, I lot. do agree that I felt like I was, I was watching like a theatrical trailer. And part yeah. of me was going, why? Why are we doing this? Like, let's just get to the show, guys. Yeah, yeah. We all know it's coming back. Yeah. So. David? Oh, I love seeing, Um. well, you don't, we're not going to see Mandy Bennett, but you hear his voice. <laughs> his voice. He <laughs> claims we're not going to. I know he's off shooting his Shannara Chronicle season two, I believe. Right. I think they shoot that yeah. in New Zealand. So he's busy doing that right now. But we get to hear his voice. There's a mention of somebody's father. And I wasn't sure if that was going to be Deathstroke's son. Because there is a character called Grant Wilson in the comics. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's going to be him. That's another character. But uh, he's talking about his father. And that'd be interesting if he shows up because he's pretty, he has some yeah. chaos. And didn't Legends of Tomorrow did the Son of Deathstroke? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 yeah, so I wonder yeah. if he might show up. That'd be interesting. We got to get that and man. More who, Dolph London, that, of course. More which Dolph. Is always awesome. uh, and we got that Every man. Who, was great. Yeah. <laughs> we got the Manu Bennett Bob, uh, body double. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see the casting of Manu <laughs> Bennett. Uh, all right, let's do. I know that Eric is not caught up on Agent, so I won't <clears> spoil anything. I will say that this week's episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., nothing big really happened as far as moving the plot forward other than them setting up for trying to take down Hydra and trying to get in and out of the framework. So, I'm listen, I think it was a great episode, and I really loved, full, first of all, this whole season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I, did you love the Ghost Rider stuff? Because I thought I it was fantastic. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. great. And I'm really liking this Agents of Hydra. I love because... I, I was always in the school that we talked all summer about Flashpoint being this big thing, and we were in Flashpoint for a day, right? We were yeah. in Flashpoint for one episode. I thought they should have done at least six to eight episodes of Flashpoint, and I'm glad that they aren't just Orient and Hydra. There is no way out of this framework. we got to figure out how to get out of this framework, and I'm really liking that this alternate universe isn't some place that is a, a farce or weird. It all makes kind of sense. The way they're writing it, the way they're, they're putting it all together. I've loved it. How about you? No, I've been digging it too. I'm, I'm a sucker for alternate universe stories okay. in general. Yeah. And I think there's been a lot of fun. I think it's also smart how they arc out S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, you know they did like the fall run and did that. Again, we talked about the problem of 22 episodes yeah. and it can be hard to sustain one storyline over it. So mm-hmm. I think it's good to do this sort of mini arcs the Eight, way they're four, doing it. Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it still sucks when the show's off for a few weeks, at least you feel like it's telling its own. It's almost yeah. like a trade paperback, you know? Yes. Because like, yeah. yeah. like, here's its own little story. Do you think we'll be out of... Hydra by season's end, do you think we'll go into the next season, them still being in Hydra? I don't I feel like they'll, even if Hydra is still a part of it, I still think it'll kind of aim into something else, you know? Okay. And we should mention that, you know, S.H.I.E.L.D. hasn't been renewed yet, and its, it's no. ratings are lower than ever, but I, I feel like I'd be shocked if they canceled it, because I feel like even if it got, like, an announcement of, like, a final season of 13 mm-hmm. episodes, they'll give it closure. Right. So, uh, and I think maybe that'll affect what their decision. Like, if they get a short final season, maybe they'll stick with Hydra because it'd be too much to introduce something oh, new. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. It's great because we have Inhumans coming out, too. I know. That's yeah. right. And, and the movie theaters first. Yeah. 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 First, do, yeah. We, do you think that we're going to see Ghost Rider before the end of the season and he's going to be part of how to get them out of the framework? Or mm. we're Netflix. ever going to see Netflix. him again? <laughs> I feel like, as you say it, I feel like there's a good chance. Like, you know, we actually just heard that Superman Man will be back on the Supergirl season mm-hmm. finale. Mm-hmm. Yep. I feel like a similar thing, right? Okay. Like in their darkest hour, yeah. they need a light, and you see the flame come on. Right. Um, so you like, should write the trailer. There. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, the Arrow trailer inspired me to write. Right. Yeah. The there you go. <laughs> Less punches, <laughs> more right. flaming chains. <laughs> yes, dig. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, the Fargo season premiere. We've been waiting. We've been talking about Fargo season three on here forever. Mm-hmm. So the fact that we finally got it, you know, these these premieres for me a lot are like they're like little christmas presents all year long because we're so <laughs> excited about them we talk about them ad nauseum here on the show and then they debut and they live up to the hype because this show has perfected the art of weird it really has it, mm-hmm. it there's just something so tangible about this universe that noah holly has created you want nothing to do with it but you kind of want to be a part of it yeah i mean it's one of those you just don't know what you're going to get when you have, like, the, just like leftovers. We're going to talk yeah. about that later. Mm-hmm. The opening. I'm like, okay, we're in Cold War Germany yeah. here. And these guys are speaking German. You have the one guy from Inglorious Bastards mm-hmm. across sure. the table. And I'm like, what's going on here? And just, the conversation just keeps going and going and going. And then it just kind of cuts. Then you're back in Minnesota. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, I assume that's going to pay off. Or is that going to be like the UFO story last time? Or is it, you know, is, what, what's that? What does that mean? Like, I just don't know. But I trust Noah Hawley enough that I know he knows how to tell a good story. Yeah. Yeah. He proved it in Legend. He's proven it now. This is his third season of Fargo. So I know I can trust him. Yeah. I yeah. will say that for a Fargo premiere, mm-hmm. and I feel like I'm like, I'm not saying bad things about the show because mm-hmm. it's one of my favorite shows. For a Fargo premiere, it didn't quite like completely nail it like I felt season one and two's premieres mm-hmm. did. But again, I, it has such a unique feel to it. 
the cast is so great. I mean, mm -hmm. you McGregor, Carrie Coon, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, I'm yes. just so sold. <laughs> so I am still waiting a little more for it to 100% grab me. And I am curious because this season doesn't seem connected to the other two. And I, I'm sure there's going to be some connection we don't know about yet. Yeah. Uh, so it didn't quite 100% get me like the other seasons, but I'm also so confident in Noah Hawley at this point that in a few episodes, I'm going to be completely immersed in yeah, it. Yeah, I feel like I was really dwelling on that cold opening for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, how is this going to fit in? I've watched the whole thing and then what, went and rewatched the opening twice. So right. like, yeah. I don't know. You know yeah. Can I say one thing real quick? Uh, sorry, I'm going to cut you off. Yeah. Uh, there was one instance that reminded me of the opening. So there's a scene when Ewan McGregor's character, the more successful version, sure. yeah. is that Ray or Emmett? Emmett. Emmett. That's Emmett. Is about to go out. He has to go to a meeting to meet David uh, Thule's character for the first time. And he looks down and he's like, he's like, honey, you have your slippers on yeah. still. And the guy, when he was being interrogated, had his slippers on as well. I don't know if that, I, don't, I, I could be, so I, I might like be digging a family through. thing? No, I, I, I yeah. like that. Yeah, I don't I like know. That. There's yeah, so many things yeah. where I'm wondering, like, will the, will the UFO stuff from season two come right. back? Right. You know, there's a lot of Now, was weird... the timeline for the first season, was that present day? No, uh, this is the this the is year. it was like I want to say Late it was like 2006. Yeah. Oh, oh. Two thousand six. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the the movie was the nineties, mm -hmm. and then season one was like ten years later. Right. This oh. this is the season closest to us. Yeah, two thousand ten. Yes. Okay. Uh, and yeah. setting, but so this is I think this is like four years after the events of the first season. And yeah. the fact that that Corvette is still working in the cold weather is mm -hmm. hysterical. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm not even. Yeah. No, I would, no because I I because I kind of agree with you, Eric. That it was like I felt like it it took a little while for me to get totally into it yeah. and I think again it was partially because I was like just thinking so hard about that cold open but I think the moment for me that really grabbed me was the scene where uh where the less successful Ewan McGregor and his girlfriend were in the bathtub and the guy shows up from having yeah. like stolen the wrong mm -hmm. stamps like <laughs> yeah, basically yeah. gone in and he stolen book from of forever stamps from right him. and yeah. just murdered somebody yeah, yeah. who was not the right person at all uh, and, and that was when I was really on board especially when he was like explaining to Mary Elizabeth Winsett's character like no like this is our time I gotta get you a ring and she was like yes I'm all about that and then when she like she's, calls the cops I, I'm obsessed with her character I cannot yeah. wait to see where yeah, she goes she is cold blooded oh uh, yeah, yeah. And, you, uh, and again we don't know is she was she a prostitute? Was she a hardened criminal? Was she a yeah. murderer? Because she you can know, play some bridge though. She can. Yeah, she she can. Play bridge. She's yeah. a good bridge player. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, the, the, her counting and then he kicking mm -hmm. that. Uh, air, conditioner. Uh, air conditioner. Yes. Because in the tra in the trailers, I kept thinking, okay, well, this is the obviously the air conditioner that yeah. they, they find in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. But she calls the cops. So again, there, there's so much that can happen here. I think a Mary Elizabeth Winstead's character was my favorite. Absolutely. I agree. And yeah. She had all the layers. She had all the weirdness that is necessary to be kind of a sociopath yeah. murderer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I liked uh, Carrie Coon a lot as well yeah. as the like chief of police, basically, and her, especially that scene where um, she and her son are at dinner with her with her step grandfather right. uh, or her stepdad, and he's like talking. He like makes a comment about uh, her husband having left her for a man. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And the way that she just no, kind of like. Bible pleasantly yeah. skirts around that and it's like you want another beer yeah. like it was, it was great it was so good yeah. <laughs> we're in a golden age of carrie coon on amazing tv show. yes it's so yes. true yes. oh my god <laughs> she had three imdb credits then she gets leftovers in fargo season three it's incredible yeah <laughs> there um the the one thing is scoot mcnary if you want do you watch halt and catch fire yeah okay so i love halt mm -hmm. and catch fire i know david doesn't watch it uh but and emma I doesn't it. It, and yeah. he he's incredible in halt and catch fire but he seems so innocent that a guy that could could glue a man's mouth shut isn't the Scoot McNary character that we saw. <laughs> and the fact that he gets killed, well, I mean, we got to spoil up there anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he gets smushed by an air conditioner in the first episode is like, maybe we hope, maybe like a flashback of some Scoot McNary stuff, because I don't think they would waste the talent in the first episode. But I like do that. think Fargo's at a place, you know, uh, where it's, you know, eight episodes, right? So I think that people want to play in that world and that they would do it. Was it, was it, which Culkin? Was it Rory? Who was like the one killed in season two, Whoa. and and so he had like a big one role, of those Culkin kids. big yeah. role in that first episode, yeah. and he's killed, but he still kind of moves the plot, you know. Yes, so I can see it being a similar thing. I think yeah. people just want to, you know, they, Fargo is like a cool show, and so I think people are willing to just pop really up is. and do stuff. On you it. know what else is missing too is there's not, at least not yet, that ultimate killer character, right? Uh, season one uh, had it with Billy Bob Thornton. Right. Season two, the I uh, can't remember the Native the American older. actor's name. Yeah. That like guy who knows everything and just so much more aware than anybody else. Yeah. I guess David Dules might be the one guy who yeah. knows what's happening. Like, hey, yeah. by the way, you uh, you owe us now. You, you work for us now. It was that, that scene was so well acted, and his teeth. 
couldn't be more villainous. That <laughs> man's teeth. Yeah, whatever they are. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. they, those are those are some guy Ritchie teeth if mm -hmm. I've ever seen it. He looked yeah. great. He did look, he looked great. Yeah. All right, let's talk about everybody's favorite show on TV right now, oh, which no. is the leftovers. Yeah. It, oh, I thought it was. <laughs> I know. I was like, is he going for girl boss? Yeah, yeah. Is it a sarcastic <laughs> opening? Or is it yes, yes, yes. Girl oh my god! <laughs> the leftovers. First of all, if you weren't a Perfect Strangers fan growing up, I was. I was. I love Balky Bartokamas. Yeah. Uh, you know, my brother and I were cousin Larry and Balky for Halloween one year, oh my uh, god. And, and I had the skirt. And we like we were the in the tuxedo uh. going to the Cubs game, and we were like walking around the neighborhood, and all the neighbors like. What are you? <laughs> like, we're Balky and Larry. We're Balky and Larry. So, so great. the fact that, and, and really, when you listen to the Perfect Strangers theme song and they play it over the leftovers, it makes sense. It oh, was yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Right? And such an esoteric pull of Mark Lynn Baker mm -hmm. as the guy that is the Carrie Coon of this whole thing. And I had to really go back and look at the two actresses that played the, the, the you know, the yeah. wife, the two mm -hmm. wives of Balky mm -hmm. and Larry. Uh, that he is so obsessed with his co-stars to party, not family members, not anything, people that he spent nine years on a sitcom with, basically. Yeah. It, again, it's such a lindelof thing to do. And if this, if there was an episode that felt more like Lost than this episode, mm -hmm. I don't know, of, the, of, of this, you know, last, maybe last six or seven of, from last season into this season, this episode was crazy good. It was, it was a big swing and they completely did it. You know, yeah. the thing is that, uh, leftovers is known as like one of like the most depressing shows on TV, which it is, but it's also a brilliant show. But to take this perfect strangers thing, which was a gag, like a recurring gag in this first season, we right. heard all four of them disappeared. And then in season two, remember it was like, Oh, Mark Lynn Baker faked his own death. He yeah. was living in Mexico. That's right. they showed That's the right. Clip. Yeah. They showed him on the news. Yes. And then to bring it back here and actually bring Mark Lynn Baker on in a significant part here only one scene but a major scene and he was great he was so great yeah. uh his true fact that he actually does have two degrees from yale yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's amazing yeah. but no it's, it was such a great scene and yeah and even the fact that he brought up the fact that the one in four thing and how that connected him to nora and it's like oh yeah it does yeah. so even though it was a ridiculous like I want you might see it say looking at it from afar like that's ridiculous perfect strangers it's like in the world of this show completely sold it completely right. made it work yep. and it actually you know the reason it would strike a chord with her well one in four that's what happened to me and it would give her like traumatic flashbacks yeah it was so good right. and then they played the sad version of the perfect Strangers. i know i was just gonna know. say like the leftovers the time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was like three times in the episode we heard like the piano just the piano yeah. part mm -hmm. god it's so good yeah uh, and i love too that again it was like it was this sort of recurring gag throughout the show yeah and now not only is it this incredibly emotionally significant scene wherein you know he basically tells Nora like yeah there's there's a way to see your kids again like you can pass through and she's like are you joking those people are being incinerated yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's like no like here's the data and he he's the one that like gives her basically the USB drive that's like here's the testimonies of all the people who've done it and these people had to pass an IQ test and like this is obviously going to be a major plot point going forward in this season. So he became a catalyst to the actual story. Yes. Yeah, 100%. It was, it was heartbreaking, especially with Carrie Coon's character. Yeah. Nora. I mean, she has probably the worst day ever. For some reason, yeah. those computer screens aren't reading her fingerprints no. or something. Oh, this is not working yeah, yeah. for her. I know. Her. And then she has two instances where she's told that she doesn't really matter. I mean, one by the little girl. We finally know where she is. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. with Christina yeah. uh, from season one. Uh, and in Kentucky somewhere, and she goes out and talks to the baby. Baby's like, "Who are you?" And of course, that breaks oh. her heart. Ugh. And then she goes and she gets pulled over, you know, in a fun way by Kevin's son. And yeah. he's like, "You know, hey, I didn't even know who you who you were. Like, the baby wasn't for you. It was for my dad. That, like, yeah. I, I, I didn't even know you existed or yeah. what the yeah. words he used." And then she's just left alone. And then she walks in on Kevin trying to <laughs> yeah. kill, kill himself. himself. Right, right. That is like the worst day ever. She has such a horrible day. I was. I made the joke. <laughs> To my my friend, I was like, it was like when you were a kid and your parents came home and they caught you jerking it, right? Like that. I was like, oh god! Ah, but you've got a bag around your head with duct tape. Like my god! And yeah. she, and then she's like, you don't have to explain anything. You're no, like, you don't. In this crazy world of the leftovers, your wife walks in on you sucking on a plastic bag. She's like, no worries. But because she wants paid Wednesday. prostitutes to shoot her. Yeah, because yeah. 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 it's, it's, they're so screwed up. But it's like it, the show is done. There's such great writing and mm -hmm. great performing. Like you just so immersed yourself in this world which again when i i think if people are just listening to us explain this they're like this is a crazy show and it makes no sense <laughs> right. yeah because you watch it and you're like i am so on board you I have know. to i think you do you need to watch it though because the premise is so depressing and yeah. technically it is a depressing show but again it's just it, the the storytelling is so 
vivid and brilliant, like you just can't look away. Yeah. And yeah. too, we have all. I'm not sure what's going on in Australia. I think we're going to yeah, get I answers know. to that next I was just episode. Say, what do we yeah, think? That so, guy looks like the, the one all about his dad. So yeah. I want to yeah. talk. I always forget her name. Uh, it's Lindsay Duncan who okay. played Servilia of the uh, Julia when she was in yeah. Rome. Very mm -hmm. good actress from Rome. She's one of the cowgirls. Yeah. And yeah. we she's know like that the head cowgirl. She's the head cowgirl. Yeah. 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 And we know that Kevin is in this book. We know that he's you know yeah. the coming Messiah. I mean, there's pictures all over LA of him with angel wings in the back and Carrie Coon kind of her arms wrapped around him. So. They're prophesying about him in Australia. They know about him, but they picked the wrong guy. Oh, you're the oh, chief? That, you're the sheriff? That was amazing, by the yeah, way. When they they're like, the this, is, this is Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. Wake up, Kevin. Kevin. But here's the other thing, too, is I thought that body coming down the hallway in the house, that was Carrie Coon. Because remember, we saw an older Carrie Coon yep. at yes. the end of last episode yes. with women. And I was like, oh, that's that was my thought, that that was Kevin. That was old yeah. Kevin, we were 30 right. years in the future. And who knows, you might be right, because yeah. maybe That's Scott true. Glenn's playing older him, because we also, you know, they seem to be reading, they seem to be reading from Matt's book. How would they have that, yep. if that's, that's correct? Yeah. So yeah. a lot of people yeah. are wondering, like, is is that also a flash forward? It's mm -hmm. a, it's very, it's like a lot of stuff going on that's very classic Linda Lindelof, yes. but I'm so on board so for it. Yeah, 100%. I, I mean, uh, Carrie Coon, listen, she did two things that were <sighs> Badass. One thing that I've always wanted to do is when you're at that parking thing and that ticket oh, isn't right. working no. and people are honking at you, I want to get out of the car and be like, I will punch yeah. your car. Like, I don't want that, right? And then she has the balls to go to Kinko's, tell that poor little guy, like, yeah, that one. He's like, what? No. And he's like, blow it up. And, she, and that was Brett Butler. Yeah. You yeah. know? Mm -hmm. so, so it's just, she's a badass. She, she really, in this show, is what. Is, I mean, she's everything. Nice to see Regina King back, too. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing King. like Wu-Tang Clan on a trampoline, right? Oh, my God. Ah. That was hilarious. Right? <laughs> it was like, that was such a great scene. It's like, it was, like, like hilarious, but it was also really poignant. And yeah. that's, that's, like, that's what The Leftovers is. Like, yeah. all these things that shouldn't maybe work, and they do work. Right? And didn't she initially say, like, the Wu-Tang band? Yeah, the yeah, Wu-Tang yeah, Wu band. band. <laughs> because it looked like a phoenix, so she wanted to cover up, you know, right. her children's names. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see yeah. Lindelof's uh, Instagram post about this episode? Uh -uh. Uh -huh. It was a picture of Jack from Lost, and it it said something about like that's how you explain a tattoo because he's always you know Lindoff has always said their worst episode was the explaining Jack's tattoo and yeah. I was like totally right you you um, messed up with that one you nailed it on this one yeah. coming back around this is yeah. the Lindelof redemption tour as far as leftovers go all right uh, let's get into everybody's favorite new Netflix show absolutely sweeping the nation oh my God. with all kinds of positive love and affection about the early 2000s fashion industry that's girl boss boy did this blow um, uh. It just <laughs> listen. I think Britt Robertson is a is a great young actress. Yes. Uh, yep. And I mm -hmm. think that this this the story of Nasty Gale is pretty great. I just think that this was really a slap in the face to not only the audience but I think the woman that that created Nasty Gale. And for mm -hmm. us to want to like a girl that is is blatantly stealing has real no redeeming qualities. Like yes, when she leaves and she quits that job, she starts crying. But that she's right back to like telling dudes the f off and it just yeah. they're really and she, and like the poor guy who's well, the drummer could you play a more dumb looking dude they're like hey just be pretty and dumb can you do that in this yeah. show like mm. everything was sort of so stereotypically not what I thought the show was yeah. going to be about. And, and like, she did have a moment too where she was like, why am I such an asshole? And then she didn't do anything about it. Yes. Like, yeah. you, you thought you were maybe going to like start down a redemption. Like that was the thing was I understand that we were getting to the point of her, you know, having this catalyst to begin her business. All of that is great. But like, I was missing that catalyst of like, why should I care about this yeah. person? How many episodes did you watch? Just the first. Just the first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, and this is the thing. It doesn't is, get better after four. I'll tell I, you that much. I, <laughs> again, and don't, I don't, I'm definitely not of the opinion that every single series, movie, whatever has to be about wholly likable characters. Yeah. Yeah. However, mm -hmm. to me, she just came across as so, like, I cannot stand stories about people who will not pay their freaking rent. Yes. I can't stand That's it. That's girls. I, yes. It, yes. Yes, I totally agree. That's why I couldn't get into girls because I can't, like I lived in New York. I've told you this before. I said mm -hmm. on the show I couldn't stand people that all they did complain about how like their dad didn't give enough money for rent. Yes. Uh, just that just, <sighs> that's not a redeeming quality for me. I've had to work my whole life, yes. every job in the world, just to survive. Yeah. And now you're making me watch a show about a girl who's like I don't know what to do with my life. I'm pretty and it's hard. I completely agree with you about like you know having it's okay that you know to not like the main character, mm -hmm. but you still want have to want to invest in them. Yeah, and that was a big problem, especially since this is going to be we know is a true story about her finding success. And so she's just so mean. Like uh, the two th scenes that really stuck out to me were when she gets Jim Rash to sell her the. Uh, the jacket yes. and then she's like so mocks him F to his off. face yeah. 
Yeah. And and then the scene when she like yells to uh, I can't remember if this is the first or second. I only saw the first two, but there's a part where she like after she sells the jacket online and makes a lot of money, yeah. she like yells to RuPaul's character like. Oh, you're going to work, you sucker! And I'm yeah. just like, oh yeah, you suck. That like, was, yeah, I was yeah, yeah you go to work to make that money. That was actually yeah, you know? my, <laughs> work. my favorite uh, moment of the uh, first episode was when RuPaul showed up for about thirty seconds. Yeah, and for me, listen, if you put RuPaul, RuPaul is an American treasure. In yes, my, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. If you put RuPaul in a show and you sell, if that's all you use him for. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm with you, by the way. I'm a big Britt Robertson fan. I've, I've liked her since Swingtown, damn yeah, it. I watched yeah. Swingtown. And if CW wants to bring back the Secret Circle, I'm all on board. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just, you I can't even like Britt her. Roberts in The Longest Ride. <laughs> yeah, Listen, I will say it. Uh, it just, this, yeah. But you don't want to spend time with the character. That's the thing. I watched two episodes and I was like, okay, what, there's 11 more? I, mm. I can't do it. Like, yeah. I can't be like, I want to spend more time with this character. But I feel like with some shows, you can try the, you can tell they're trying too hard. Like, it really felt like it was yes. trying to be smart, quippy. Almost yes. remind me like, almost like an either Diablo Cody script or yes. uh, Aaron Sorkin, that very, like, hey, we're really smart. No one talked this in real life, but it's interesting yeah. to listen to. None of the dialogue was interesting. And it's, it's, I believe it's the writer of Pitch Perfect, which I really like. <clears throat> yeah, Kate and Cannon. It's oh, like yeah. that, that kind of nailed that like self-aware language, but it's, it's a very hard thing to do right. And in this show, yeah, it feels really right. mannered. And it now it's like we're trying to be clever. You know, today uh, Nasty Gal went bankrupt. Yeah. So yeah. you know, the whole company is yeah. is. And to be honest with you, if this is how the character was, and, I, and mm -hmm. Aubrey Page, writer for Collider.com, she nailed it. If you want to read a good article about it, she she kind of breaks it down. We were talking on email about it. Just the, we were, and we talked about the trailer. I got really excited because I love female-driven shows about. Yeah women in business and like creating yeah, what did we brands. just watch the incredible miss mazel or yeah. something oh on my gosh the marvelous marvelous miss, miss mazel. Mazel. that was great so yeah. good but did you like that pilot? yeah i did oh, man. Oh, yeah. i love that i'm so excited that got picked up yeah, for me series too. and for this one i was just kind of like man it's 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 unfortunate because i again the reason we get passionate about shows like this and a lot of people on in youtube and twitter they're gonna whatever is because we want them to be good yes. we always want that we don't set out and be like god i'm so glad girl boss sucked no yeah, because no. Our time is precious, and we watch so much death on TV. <laughs> right. uh, but yeah, that's that, that was girl boss for us. I, I got to tell you, I mean, out of five sexy East West jackets, you got to give it like a solid one point yeah. two. Yeah, I do want that East West jacket. Though. Yeah, that East West jacket. jacket. It's a good jacket. A good jacket. <laughs> and you were you were a girls fan, David. So you know, like, would you even compare this to girls? No, because what I liked about girls. And I didn't, I didn't stick with it the whole way through. I watched yeah. it the first three seasons. Is that I liked how Lena Dunham was just trying it. She was just mm -hmm. doing the story she wanted to tell. Yeah. Didn't care. She didn't care who liked it. This is my story. Here it is. But this, again, like you said, it felt manufactured. Girls felt new. It no. felt refreshing. And it felt real. Yeah, yeah. it felt real. I, I just lost touch with it after a while. But yeah. I, this did not feel new at all. Yeah. 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 All right, girl boss. Uh, before we get into highs and lows, I, I wanted to say something quickly about Erin Moran. Obviously, uh, Joni from Joni Loves Chachi's yeah. Happy Days, a legendary actress, died very, very young. Um, she was great, and I know my mom uh, loved her on Bold and the Beautiful, and she worked mm -hmm. in TV forever. Yeah. An American icon. Uh, there was an amazing uh, when that that terrible show with Scott Baio when he was like Scott Baio is forty and single or something. That show on oh, VH1. Yeah. Oh right. She was like the voice yeah. of reason in that show, which was so refreshing that she was like, "Quit your whining, yeah, and work." And yeah. that's <laughs> why maybe <laughs> girls can be bosses <laughs> right. like Aaron Moran. Yes. Uh, yeah. So Aaron, thank you for all you did, and uh, you know thoughts and prayers to her family. Let's go and high and lows um we wanted to talk about wheel of time briefly because i know this came out i don't know a ton about wheel of time mm -hmm. but it's getting a series it's 12 books yes. 14 14 books have you guys read all these books i have not read all of them i have read some of them okay. uh they are all about 900 pages <laughs> So what? it is an undertaking, yeah. So the series was uh, created by Robert Jordan, yeah. and he wrote up to maybe nine or ten of the books, okay. and he died before he finished this series, which is what I'm afraid is going to happen right. with George R. R. Martin. Uh, God, no. Knock on wood. But anyway, so yeah, it's this epic. That's why I love short stories. It's a it's an epic <laughs> fantasy series. It did finally get finished. Uh, Brandon Sanderson, who wrote the Mistborn series, cool. uh, did actually bring the story to a conclusion. And this is a series that has been in discussion to potentially be a series for quite some time. Okay. And I'm very interested to see what direction they go with it. If they want to go sort of the Game of Thrones direction of, okay, we're trying to recreate this epic fantasy or a number of years ago, uh, strangely enough, uh, Sam Raimi and Robert Tapert, who do, you know, uh, Ashford's Evil Dead and, and the early Spider-Man films, they made a series um, off of this uh, series of books, oh my gosh, by, uh, 
uh, Terry uh, Goodkind. Most of Clatter Book Talk, David. Uh, yeah. Yes. No, I'm not um, really um, Terry Goodkind. Uh, yeah, so the Seeker. The, yeah, Legend of the Seeker, oh, which was, yeah. which was yeah, more was of a Xena and Hercules type kind okay. of show. So yeah. I don't know what direction they're going to go. The way they go for stars, because those guys did Spartacus. Yes. Yeah. Taper yes. and Amy did, yeah. they produced Spartacus, so uh, they could bring that to stars. Did, yeah. did you, have you read any of these books? No, but I mean, there's a Jordan Khan. There's its own convention. And it's about like the dragon reborn, and there's a dark one. Yeah, yeah. I got to defeat the dark one. So mm -hmm. I haven't read them either. I will give a shout out to uh, my coworker Terry Schwartz because it was her article at IGN and one at Variety that co-broke this story. Oh, awesome! Ah. Uh, and Terry had been tracking this for like a year, you wow. know, because it was like you said, it's been a long time in development. There was that like weird pilot that FX aired in the That's middle of the right. night, but they yeah. said that they probably did that to keep the rights. It was like a I, Roger Corman. No, Corman I, deal. Yeah. I remember when that happened, yeah. and I, because I, you know. Growing up, my parents were both big sci-fi fantasy yeah. people, so this was one of the books that my mom like sh thrust in my direction. Um, and I had another friend that was really into the series, and I remember her being like, "Wait, this is a there was like a pilot in the middle of the night, like it's a Wheel of Time thing." And I, yeah, the, mm -hmm. they basically were just trying to hang on to the rights. Yeah, and I know that they were like, "Don't think that that's what the direction we're going." Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> and I just, but all I knew, having not read the books, is people were really excited about this series. Yeah. And I, so I think that people, were, you know, and right now there's no network, but it's like Sony doing it. Yeah. Uh, I am forgetting the name of the showrunner, Rafe. Uh, I want to say your last name right, Jude Kidden. He was a Survivor contestant who wrote for Chuck and Agents of Shield. Okay. And he's on board as the showrunner, so I think. Uh, yeah, you know, Rafe Judkins. You had yeah, it right. Yeah, I did mm -hmm. get it right. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, and mm -hmm. so yeah, we're, yeah, I think you know, post Game of Thrones, people see the value in properties like this. Yeah. And I think they're going to try to go really big with it. Right on. Yeah. Wheel of time. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, Silicon Valley is back. I, listen, that's one of my favorite comedies on TV right now, and it didn't, it did not fail to perform. This, the pilot, and where this is going is it's just so funny. Are you a Silicon Valley fan? I love it, but I haven't finished last season. So okay, I All right. David, did it's you great. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. man, this. Uh, there's just something so lovable about these group of idiots, right? Yeah. And they, they're geniuses, they but they're, geniuses. they're not really, they're assholes to I each other. I feel like other. if they had better communication skills, everything would be solved. They yeah. could just talk <laughs> to each other, but they just struggle to talk to each other. I think the best thing that I, somebody ever told me, was like, it's like a nerd frat. And I love mm -hmm. that that aspect about it. It's like, they are doing really important lambda, work. Lambda, lambda, lambda? Yeah, it's yeah, lambda, lambda, yeah, lambda. Yeah, lambda, lambda. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just, it, it's so, so fun. So it's Silicon Valley killing it again with the pilot. Looking forward to what the new internet is going to be and what sexual reference they make towards it. <laughs> uh, David, Expanse finale. It was it was good. Yeah. Well, I won't spoil anything, of course, but it's just... Uh, it's gearing up for season three, which is big. I never thought the show would last. Uh, I remember when it came out, Sci-Fi was like, oh, it's our biggest budget show that we've done. I think it was like five to six million yeah. per episode, huge production value. I think they outbid HBO for it originally. And I was just really impressed with how well it was just made. It's, not, it's the best show since Battlestar that Sci-Fi's done. Have you tried it out at all? Yeah, I, I, I've it, only seen a few. But. Yeah, it, it's, it's dense. It's definitely dense for dense. a season. I'm glad you're trying to make it through, Josh. I, I know it's a lot. It I is. know it's a lot of sci-fi. Here's the problem. There's, there's, there's so done. much TV to watch. A lot of times I multitask there's and I can watch, watch certain there. shows. Yeah. Yeah. Watch. With ex the Expanse, I have to like stare at the television and stop it. Pay attention. Like, okay, yeah, you can't casually watch the show. No, definitely not. But it was good. Definitely check it out. It's on Amazon Prime. You can check out season one. You could purchase season two, but make sure you're ready for season three. It's going to be Speaking of Amazon Prime, Bosch season Ooh, three. Yeah, Bosch. So I watched the first two episodes. Okay. Uh, it's just back, you know, I, I love Titus Welliver. I think he's a very uh, it's a good actor. It's just a well-made cop show. There's nothing yeah. supernatural going on. It's not like True Detective, nothing like over the top. It's just a guy doing his job as a detective in LA. That's you know, it. I was gonna, you know what I like most about Bosch is it, it really represents LA yeah. really well. It doesn't like over glamorize the city, doesn't yeah. do anything, and it shows like the grit and like ugliness of our city. It was really. my, it was my problem with True Detective season two. They created this alternate town that didn't exist. I'm like, you have L. A. Like, just use this city that we live in that has all these interesting stories. And but they made up was like Vinci PD or something like that in True Detective season two. Yeah, it was basically Vernon. Well, it seemed like in season two also it's like they they were like, oh, people liked Rust. What if everyone acted like Rust? And yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And that's yeah. A, it worked in this first season to have the grounding presence of Woody Harrelson's character. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, we got the Keepers trailer on Netflix, which dropped just today. Uh, it's about a, a murder of a nun in Baltimore. It's basically the same guys that brought you uh, Making a Murderer. Uh, looks incredible. Uh, Baltimore, dirty city we know from The Wire. <laughs> and this looks really, really cool. Uh, the cover-up by the Catholic Church. It's sort of spotlight-ish at points. Keepers on Netflix. I'm in. Uh, Lock and Key at Hulu with Scott Derrickson. This is one of those 
pilots that kind of like went into turnover too. Uh, now they got Scott Derrickson on board, who's Doctor Strange. I'm I'm calling this a high. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm psyched for this. Uh, I actually saw the pilot that they they did a few years you ago. Comic Con when you yeah. watched it. I was yeah, in that room. Yeah, yeah I, was I was there too. I, was and there, I really yeah. liked it. I mean, and that mm-hmm. was a lot of good people involved. Josh Freeman, who did yeah. Sarah Connor Chronicles, mm-hmm. did it. Didn't go to series. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is a great team assembled for this new version. It's a really good source material. Yeah. So uh, uh, fingers crossed on this one. And the director right. comes from the horror genre, so yeah. he did the Sinister. Movie. Oh, so, okay, yeah. yeah. So that, that could be a good thing. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we got the um, HBO's classic trailers. You want, they have they re released trailers for The Wire, mm-hmm. Sopranos, uh, Six Feet Under. Deadwood. Deadwood. Yeah. yeah. So cool. Well, you know, like, we were talking about how we don't have time for all the great TV. This is pretty smart of them to be like, hey, remember all these great shows we yeah. have? Yeah. <laughs> and they're Here, sitting on HBO sampling. Go, yeah. staring at your face. Right. Because it's yeah. made me want to drop everything and rewatch The Wire, even though yeah. I don't have the time to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? right. yeah. I, uh, I love when I meet people that haven't watched The Wire, and then they watch it and text me or call me. They're like, how did I not know about the show? I was like, how did you not know about it? What? <laughs> uh, okay, uh, The Americans. Are you all caught up in The Americans? I'm like two behind. It's okay. like my favorite show and I'm two behind. I won't say anything. Star other... Celebration got me. Yeah. yeah. Um. Other than, uh, man, uh, what, what they're doing with Gabriel is, is, is sad. I, I really, mm. even though he's kind of, a, a, he's a mean man, he's such a lovable villain uh, mm. that it's, and you know, Anthony, uh, or Frank Langella playing that role is just, Legendary. It's one of my mom's favorite shame actors. He, yeah, it's a shame he hasn't been nominated for anything. Mm-hmm. He's so good. The feud finale. I know I was the only one that watched this all. The <laughs> I, I went through to episode three. It's not that I didn't like it. I just was moving on to other There's things. There's just but so, so much TV. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm glad I started it. Man, yeah. I, I appreciate I, it. I, I shed a decent amount of man tears at the uh-huh. end there because it's a really tragic story mm-hmm. and it the way it ends. It's almost like a call to action yeah. for humanity. I mm. fully intend to sure. binge finish yeah, that. It's, it's, it was really well done. Uh, the new American Gods trailer. What do you guys think? I mean, I, it's hard for me to say because now that I've seen several episodes of Dark oh. Gods, I, I love it though. I mean, I'm, I'm all on board okay. on the show. So I say I really like the trailer and I'll say I hope you really like the show because it's it's a really cool, very offbeat show as you might expect. How many sure. episodes have you seen? I've seen four. See, oh. so yeah. I'll just, we'll just combine these. There's something here that talks about going through American Gods, withdrawing highs and lows. So I was like, Eric, I got the screeners. So I was like, I'll just watch one. Yeah. So I don't want to get too far ahead because I don't have to wait forever. And I just watched all four in one night. And now <laughs> uh, I have to wait until like May 27th. <laughs> yeah. I've, seen all, I've seen four episodes. Oh, yeah, I've seen four Jersey. episodes. I know. <laughs> so, I didn't get them in my digital screening room. I, you have to ask for them. All right, I'll, I'll send them, them an email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, I always throw out a shout to Jeopardy each week in the hind lows. They had a classic TV. I went five for five. I was feeling pretty good about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody watch the new Bill Nye? I on did. Right? I, I loved yeah. it. Which one? Yes. The new Bill, uh, Bill Nye. Oh, I've not seen the Bill Nye. Yeah, I watched the first two uh and i'm like how did i miss the auditions to be a correspondent on this <laughs> show uh no i i loved it i mean i'm just such a fan of bill nye uh and he's so because he's just so like down to earth and like doesn't deal with any bullshit and like the first episode's about climate change it's mm-hmm. so good and then the second episode is about alternative medicine and he's like guys alternative medicine is an alternative to actual medicine and i'm just <laughs> yeah. I, it's great Bill it's Nye, so good it. he's back. Yeah. Uh, let's go doctor who and emojis yeah okay so basically this episode of doctor who in a not as creepy way, sort of reminded me of that episode of Black Mirror, where, you know that oh, episode of Black yeah. Mirror, where like basically your likes are like displayed and you're mm-hmm. like trying to go around. It's the one with uh, Bryce, Bryce Dallas. Dallas. Yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. That was a creepy one. Uh, it was not as creepy as that, but basically okay. like they go to the future and, you know, humans are colonizing this other planet and they're setting it up and they basically have these like robots uh, that project emojis because it needed to be um, a universal language that everybody would understand. And so everybody understands like emojis. But emojis. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you, if you get not happy, oh, it's no. not a good it's thing. Not good. <laughs> not yeah. a, good it was a fun episode. I'm like it. I've never yeah, watched really Who on a regular basis. This is my I first like time the, I like this it. emoji. This yeah. guy. That's yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of that guy okay. uh, with Peter Capaldi. Oh, <laughs> it was nice. great. Love it. Uh, <laughs> and then new Steven Universe episode starts. Yeah, May 8th. so uh, Steven Universe has always had a really inconsistent airing schedule, and they've often had the problem of episodes getting leaked before they air on Cartoon Network. Hmm. Uh, but there was about a 49 second teaser trailer uh, that just looks like the end of this season is literally going to um, just rip out my heart and all of my internal <laughs> organs and throw them on the table. Uh, but yeah, so the, the so there's going to be new episodes starting May 8th. Whether or not they're going to drop it. 
it in the sort of traditional manner of a Stephen bomb where basically they release a new episode every single day for a week mm -hmm. or if it's going to be like every Thursday we're going to get a new episode or whatever because they did that for a while as well is unclear but uh, yeah there should be Stephen they're finishing Ball. out season four uh, and then apparently there is also going to be a season five so that's a good thing all right and Riverdale, Riverdale season one is coming to Netflix it already? is well, yeah they have that deal yeah all the CW right. shows now mm -hmm. eight days after their finales yep. are on Netflix yeah, yeah. so yeah. May 18th yeah. they uh, tweeted about it I think a couple days ago saying that officially it was going to be on Netflix uh, May 18th so if you yeah. haven't watched Riverdale which is a ridiculously fun show yeah, it is uh, fun. you know now you'll be able to binge it on Netflix so who killed Jason Bloom Jason know Blossom, yet. we don't know yet. Don't Jason know Blossom, yet. Jason Bloom. That's right. uh, Bloom <laughs> Blossom, yeah, it's, it's all flower Blossom. related. Man, I'm still, I don't know, I, I think, meh, I don't want to throw out my predictions. <laughs> I think we talked about it. Who do you think? Because you're not going to be on the show once we know who killed him. Uh, who do you think killed him? Man, I, I, it can't be Cheryl, but then there's a part of me that's like, is there an insane way it can right. be? Uh, so I keep going back to that. Uh, but I feel like someone in the Cooper family. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe I, I have this like small Do you think thought. it's Skeet Ulrich? Maybe, maybe. I, I also think like that like would almost be a letdown. Also, this like small thought that maybe it's the grandma. The grandma, <laughs> the grandma, the just face. Yeah. Yeah. grandma, the grandma is ready to go full yeah. horns yeah. at any moment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, let's go into some Twitter questions, guys. As always, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. Again, uh, we'll say it one more time. Next week, starting Monday, we are live every day of the week. Woo! 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. <laughs> Eastern. We're doing a test run. If you guys are watching and the numbers are great, we'll keep doing it daily. Uh, or at least maybe maybe post-summer when the new shows come back, we'll try some daily stuff. So uh, thank you guys for making this happen. Let's go to some Twitter questions. Uh, first one comes from at Labs Stan. Favorite friendship in TV? I have Scott McCall and Styles, Ollie and Diggle, and Josh McCougan and Sinead DeVries. Aww. Aww. Sinead's not even you. here you're for in, that. I know, you're in South Africa. I, listen, I think the best TV friendship, the one that stands the test of time, is always Jerry Seinfeld and George Costanza. Without a doubt, they had each other's back, whether <laughs> it was rending books or I choose not to race. Yep. That's the best friendship. What do you think, David Griffin? Uh, for me, I know I mentioned Rome earlier, but uh, Titus Polo and Lucius Verinus, uh, that's such an amazing friendship. Basically, they put these two characters into the Julius Caesar story, so you'd have kind of like a regular person's version of what was going on in Rome, and these guys are friendship. They're just so unlikely uh, characters to come together, and they do, yeah. and it's only two seasons. It ended too soon, but they were fantastic. Eric? Yeah. Uh, a show I also mentioned earlier, Twin Peaks, but I'll go with uh. Cooper and Truman, because <laughs> I rewatched Twin Peaks recently, and you know, thing is Truman was probably one of the most normal characters on a show of crazy characters, yeah. but I loved how he just liked this weird guy who came into town and was constantly amused by him, and <laughs> Cooper obviously respected sort of the straightforward lawman that yeah. Truman was, so I really like that dynamic. Like For me, it is uh, Leslie Nope and Ann Perkins oh, on Parks yeah. 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 I mean, that was such a fantastic portrayal of two women who are friends, who have each other's back, and just genuinely like each other. And, and so often in TV and, and just in fiction in general, you'll often get these female friendships where you know they're, they're sort of frenemies and they're stabbing each other in the back. But like Anne and Leslie, were, they were just, oh, they were so solid. Loved I just it. love them. All right, next question comes from at Swarlton Banks, which I'm guessing is a play on Carlton Banks, like that mm -hmm. name. Uh, Claire TV Talk, what show do you think peaked too early? For me, I think Dexter should have ended at season four. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would tend to agree with the Dexter one. I'm going to go in the same vein of a Parks and Rec. I'm going to go, I think The Office peaked yes, too early. Yes, I mm -hmm. was going to say the same thing. You know, once they got, once Steve uh, Carell left the show, yeah. I really think they should have tried to make that a series finale. Yep. Another one, I, I know I've mentioned already in the show, I mention all the time, Sopranos definitely peaked. Uh, yeah. End of season two, middle of season three. Once season four hit, we really were just in kind of a weird place that David Chase was just doing mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Like, I didn't love yeah. four or five, even six of Sopranos. Of Sopranos but David. Mm -hmm. The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I said it. Leave it. Sorry, I think that show, I love the first season with uh, Frank Darabont's vision of that. And I think yeah. since then, it's, it hasn't gotten stronger as it's gone on. So for me, it's gotten it's longer. It's gotten longer. A lot of walking. They keep walking. Yeah. Uh, he did lead me to this answer. But yeah, Dexter is a great example mm -hmm. of it. Dexter should never have been an eight year show, first no. of all. Yeah. Should have been a five year show. Mm -hmm. and they should have wrapped it up. And then the other one, though, is uh, an early one as far as early in its run is Heroes, which one oh, great wow. season. Yeah. Yeah. Season. One it great was. season. It yes, was. the and first then, season of Heroes is so good. So good. Yeah, and then it yeah. just starts going downhill. Yeah. After that. I feel sort of like similarly to The Office. Uh, oddly enough, like that '70s show was really yeah. fun yeah. in the beginning, great and call, then like great. once they were too old to be teenagers, and, and once Topher then Grace left, pathetic. they yeah. should have just ended the show. Yeah. Like, yeah. Once they're adults still partying in the yeah. basement, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, okay, let's go to uh, at DS Spicy who asks, is there any show you think sends the wrong message? 13 Reasons Why is getting a lot of backlash for allegedly doing this. I don't know if 13 Reasons Why is sending... There's been a lot of articles wrong written about message. that, though. I've yeah. seen that in the last week or so. I, 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 I mean, listen, it's television, so... Uh, I. It's a, it's a scripted form, to be honest with you. I think there was a lot of reality TV show that sends the wrong message, namely Teen Mom, mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of teens out there that were like, yeah. if I get pregnant, I can be on TV. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it, I don't know. 13 yeah. Reasons Why I don't think sent the wrong message. I think 13 Reasons Why kind of showed that let's be nicer to each other. Let's yeah. And, and I mean, when we had our series discussion of 13 Reasons Why, like yeah. one of the things that we really talked about a lot was the fact that it does a really nice job of not just being an anti-bullying PSA. And it also does address the fact that you, it's not fair that she's blaming these people no, for her not death. No, not at all, not at all. Even though you you like her and you want her story to end happily and you know it can't. I, yeah, I don't, I, it, I feel like whoever is crying that it's sending the wrong message are parents who are outraged by the fact that, you know, they're basically getting this very raw and realistic look at how teenagers interact yeah, with one another. Yeah, I just to tell you that People just are, they have pain. You know, people yeah. going through pain, whether uh, people are bullying you, whether you have trouble with your parents at home or lack of parents at your home. I mean, everybody is going through pain, and it just showed all of that. Now, her story's at the center of that because she made those tapes, but I don't think it was sending the wrong message. Yeah, yeah I think it uh, obviously you have a huge audience out there, and they're going to interpret things the way they're going to sure. interpret them. So, a lot of the anti hero shows, for instance, you know, oh, there are yeah. people like mm. Breaking Bad is one of my all time favorite shows, but there are people who are like, oh, Walter White became so awesome, and Skylar mm -hmm. sucks. She's trying to stop him from being awesome. It's like, no, actually, no, no, no. he's like <laughs> become a horrible criminal, yeah. Yeah. and she's realizing her husband's becoming a horrible criminal yeah. Yeah. so there's mm -hmm. times like that where it's like i don't think vince gilligan was trying to like glamorize mm -hmm. anything but yeah some of the audience will probably focus on the wrong thing yeah and mm -hmm. sort of you know take away the wrong message and so sometimes i think wrong message it's in it's either beholder i guess yeah, yeah. all right finally uh at redfield five four eight nine asked my girlfriend and i are expecting <laughs> our first child in honor of that who is your favorite child tv character of all time hands down ricky schroeder silver spoons that's me Hmm. Ricky Stratton, hmm. I believe. Oh, uh, Ricky Stratton. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Go, David. You got child it. actor. Child character. Child, child character. character. Oh, Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sending the I, wrong I message that, there. I know. David. I know. I'm sorry. It wasn't like the most. It's not. Don't please, uh, Chris Walker. Uh, you and your wife do not model your. Child congratulations, Bart Chris. Congratulations, congratulations. But Bart Simpson is my favorite. Lady yeah. Mormont Walker. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's a goes. great choice. E um, I love, uh, what's uh, what's the little girl's name on Modern Family, Lily? Oh, yeah, she's yeah, funny. She's, she's so great. Yeah, she's really good. She's just angry. And Obviously, <laughs> that's, that's so ra uh, Raven Simone when she oh, was the yeah, little girl on little. Cosby Show. Oh, my, oh, my God, God, she was so cute so on Cosby cute. Show. So cute, friggin' adorable. Uh, okay, <laughs> that's basically it for us here on Clara TV Talk. We've got the pick of the week, the pick of the week. Yes. Emma Fife, what do you got for us? Uh, this pick of the week is One Punch Man. One Punch Man. Uh, One Punch Man is a really great anime series uh, animated by Madhouse. It is based on what was initially uh, sort of a, a sketchy webcomic that was eventually, uh, you know, made into a real manga series and serialized in Shonen Jump. Uh, it's basically about a future Earth uh, where everybody lives sort of on this Earth-like giant continent. Uh, and the main character, Saitama, lives in City Z, which is like the big metropolis. And... In this world, these supervillains have started to emerge, and so consequently, superheroes have started to emerge. So Saitama starts off as just sort of this lame, uh, weakling office worker, uh, mm -hmm. and then he gets into a little bit of an encounter and decides to train to become a superhero. And he trains so, so hard that all of his hair falls out, uh, and <laughs> he gets there. to the point <laughs> where he can literally kill anybody <laughs> with one punch. <laughs> So he's become very bored, sort of, of the superhero life. And there's all different, like, levels of superheroes and supervillains in it. It's a Sounds lot of fun. fun. Uh, if you, you know, even Who's if you... Who's got a better One Punch? Iron Fist or One Punch Man? Oh, One Punch oh Man. Yeah, uh, definitely Iron One Fist. Punch Man. Yeah, 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 Iron Fist. Oh, punch man. boy, he does not uh, stand a chance. But, yeah, One Punch Man you can watch on Hulu. Uh, you can also watch it on Netflix now, both the uh, original Japanese version with subtitles. Or if you don't like to read your shows like I do, you can watch the dub. And the dub is actually uh, really quite good. And a lot of my friends are in 
involved in it. So Emma oh. Fife, the one punch woman here <laughs> on Collider TV Talk. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for watching today. Before we get out of here, where can the good people find you on the internet? Eric Goldman, thank you so much for being oh, here. No, thank you guys. Right? A lot of fun. Really a lot of fun. Uh, Twitter you. on I'm the Eric Goldman on Whoa. Twitter, and then I write for IGN. Mm -hmm. IGN.com slash TV is where you'll find most of my content. We we do read a lot of your guys' articles over oh, there. So thank you for it. And, and again, thank you for being here. It was great. great to be here. David Anthony Griffin of House uh, Dorchester. I'm sorry I didn't mention this, but Poldark has already been renewed for a fourth season before <laughs> before season three has even premiered. So I'm very happy that there's going to be more British television on t TV. Uh, you can find what me is on life Twitter. without Poldark? It's a good show. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at GriffinDE. Uh, Emma Fife. That's me, Emma Fife. I can be found all over the internet at my name, Emma Fife. Uh, you can also see me very frequently around this part of the world on the Movie Trivia Schmodown doing the post-game interviews, and I will be on the Schmoes No Live show this week as well. Boom, Emma Fife. I'm at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. Clatter TV Talk. Next week, we are live every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. Tune in. You guys have been asking me on Twitter. Do, can we listen? Can we watch? Please watch. Uh, the yeah. YouTube numbers really help the show going daily, going forward. Eric, would love to have you back again, man. Thank oh, you again so much be for being Thanks. here. Yeah. Eric Goldman from IGN. Guys, we'll see you next time. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.